Good morning and welcome to Utopia. It's another cold day, but the ground is frozen enough that Darnie can start uh, spreading manure again today. This could be the last day because they say it's going to go above freezing and when that happens you can't get in the fields because it gets too mucky and you don't want to get stuck with this heavy equipment. So we had some more lambs last night. Um, so we better go in and see what's happening in there today. This little guy always escapes out of the misfit pen, jumps into the feeder, and then searches for me and wants a bottle. Have you finished now? Yeah, you did do a good job. But uh, it's gotten to be a habit. He has to be fed first, jumps out of the feeder. Yeah, you're a character. Always there. And another ram. Okay, buddy, we gotta go feed the others. Yeah, we gotta feed the others. Okay, now I have the challenge of these triplets. He's crying, he's hungry. They didn't eat overnight, because mom has no milk. But they won't take a bottle. So I'm hoping, hoping, that he, he will take a bottle this morning. So I'm gonna give that a try. Okay, so. This is the behavior that these lambs are doing today. He's jumping on the bale, then leaps up and jumps on mom. Pretty sure that's not even it's mom. So the other day I had a comment, um, someone telling me about the udders on their sheep and uh, how to tell when they're imminently due. And by looking at the udder, it's extremely hard to tell that. Um, because if you look in, uh, this is the white group that's left. I would say none of these are close right now. However, when you look closely at the front two, one's got a hairy udder and one's got a bare udder, but they've both got fairly large um, udders that have developed already. And the other two, you can't even see udders on them yet. And these two have had these udders visible for quite some time now, like to the point where we thought these guys would be among the first to have lambs. And here they are. We got four left, and they're still there. So um, what I wanted to say is that some sheep will start uh, forming an udder really early. And others, um, like say this one, without me putting my hand under there, she might have a tiny udder there and maybe a couple of days a week before she lambs, it'll start to form a little more. But even then, if there's wool there, you might not notice it and you'll come in the barn and she's got a lamb and this one's still standing there with no lamb. So um, they will have an udder before they lamb, but it's not, it won't tell you how close they are. It just will tell you that yes, they are pregnant for sure. Um, what usually really indicates, um, if they're going to lamb in the near future is their vulva. So if you look at her, it's, um, it's kind of a pale pink and it's, um, fairly tight to her body. Um, it's looking firm. What will happen in a you that's going to lamb shortly is all that skin around there that you can see will start to inflame and it will go a darker pink usually and it will jiggle a bit and I've told you in other videos if you hadn't seen it um, we call that um, being rosy so 
it'll be kind of floppy, darker pink, and inflamed. So um, that is a sure sign that they're going to lamb within a few days anyway. Um, that is far more predictive than looking at an udder. So this is what's left of the suffix. Pretty small group right now. Um, it's just funny because everyone, now that they're spaced, they all lay out and have their own little spot. And right in the middle of this spot, someone else has their spot picked out. Scotty. He's just so happy being in with the sheep. She had a lamb this morning. She's another old girl. It seems like the old girls are coming in later. And there he is back there. Apparently she was very defensive of him and he couldn't get close. How are you feeling? I gotta check and see if he's a boy or a girl now. Is that okay? Can I have a look at him? So, he's a little boy. Big boy. And he is 247. You guys are so pretty too. Hi, Cammy. How you doing? If I'm petting Cammy, you know I'm in the replacement uh, group. I'm gonna just go over and see Chewy here for a second. Hi, Chewy. There you are. How you doing today? Looking pretty good. So I forgot to mention the other day. Hi. Hi, you're very nice. Yes, you're very nice. Uh, I forgot to mention the other day that um, we no longer have Droopy. Remember Droopy who uh, had a hard time drinking the bottle? Because uh, we thought he had um, some nerve damage due to uh, a bad birth. He was um, a backwards lamb. Um, or he had some kind of little seizure or a stroke or something, but uh, his ear drooped on one side and his mouth kind of was a little floppy on one side. But otherwise he was doing great and if you helped him with the bottle he could do it. But anyway, um, it's not a bad thing. It's not uh, that Droopy died. Droopy's doing great. Um, he went to a misfit farm, a farm where they take in um, basically um, injured or, or disabled, I'll call it, disabled animals, and they look after them and give them for, forever homes. So he's gone there, which um, is a much better place for him than here, um, where he had to compete with all these animals. And probably, uh, well, for sure, he would have ended up going to market. So he's got a good long life. We're happy about that. Um, I think their their farm name is Miss, the Misfit Farm or something like that. Uh, you could probably Google them if you wanted to see what they're doing. Hi, Cammy. This is a little lamb cluster we have going in Suffolk group number three. Hi guys. I don't know why they started buying. Dorset group too, and there's the brothers. They stick together. So if 
if you're raised together, you stay together. There's a nice mom and her, her nice lamb. She knows we're talking about her. Hey, you're very pretty. Yeah, we're talking about you because you look lovely. Yeah, you do. Very pretty. Nice open face. Woolly ears. Good legs on her. Good back and hips. Nice little you lamb. Where is this little guy here? I don't know what he's been up to, but that woolly face catches everything. Wait till he turns around here. Buddy. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. When you want to see them, they don't turn around. There we go. What's that? Is that a monkey? Uh, two monkey faces. Oh, yeah. Uh, sisters. Sees the size difference between the pens. That's the back pen, group one. This is group two, front pen. Quite a little size difference here. There we go. That's the South Down look that I, I'm real. People say it's acceptable. I don't like it at all. They shouldn't have woolly faces like that. But they're cute. What have you guys been into? I swear that um, I was also talking to somebody about Kevin's uh, and Karen being really white. But they don't have a mom. And I'm thinking that these lambs that have to nurse and go under and get all the lanolin and dirt and stuff off mom, it rubs off onto them. Whereas Kevin and Karen here... See how bright white they are? They have nothing to get dirty from. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. So he looks just sparkling clean like he's just had a bath. Honey, you just ate. You just ate. You don't need to be greedy. So that's my theory on why Kevin and Karen are so white. And I never realized how many theories I had until I started doing YouTube and people started asking questions which made me think and question things myself. So it's been kind of interesting that way. Hi, sweetheart. You are very white and clean. I'm in Suffolk groups one and two right now. And there's uh, number two. Always in the center of things. Oh, I was gonna say, that, but the mom walked by. That noise is, uh, is the snow sliding off the roof because the sun's shining today on it. I was gonna say this guy here he was laying flat out in the pen and sheep generally when they're lying down in the pen are like this. Chewing their cuds or their heads up or they might lay their head down in front of them but they generally don't lay flat out. This guy was laying flat out, so the first thought you always have is he's injured or he's dead. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't get the camera going before Mom woke him up and he sat up. And he's fine. There goes the snow. I came into the barn to do uh, chores a little later today because uh, there was a time change. And I guess we were so busy I didn't even realize it. So we're about an hour behind, so everybody's kind of in relaxed mode, like this guy here. And there, There's an example of the sheep laying flat out. I mean, they do do it, but that's also what a dead sheep looks like. <laughs>
So you always get you always get a little nervous when you see sheep laying like that. So yeah, first thing you do is look for them breathing. Not a sad thing to think the first time you see an animal like that. But he's breathing and he's having a little snooze. I'm gonna try walk around these guys without disturbing them. Hi guys. Hello. Oh, that's number three's mom. Uh, number three, uh, you've seen him in here. He's also a really stocky uh, ram, like like number two. And you see, she's um, a lot of people say we have fat sheep, and we, to be honest, some are a little too fat. But um, usually, the mums who are really good mums. If you look at her, um, she's not fat at all anymore. She's, if anything, I can even see the bones sticking up on her back through the wool as he stand, as she stands on top of her. Um, but that's actually a good sign. It means that mom, she's still healthy and happy and stuff, but it means that uh, she's milking and doing a good job feeding her lamb. So you'll see that these really skinny ewes, they're all being fed really well right now because they are lactating. But those are the mums that uh, when you look at their, their lambs, they generally have the heaviest lambs because they're putting all their their um, reserves into the, into the milk production for the lambs. Um, and uh, conversely, if you see a poor lamb like this one, my guess is this lamb will have um, a fat mom. Fat moms tend to put it all into themselves. And uh, because of that, they have fat deposits in their udder, uh, which restrict the amount of milk that they actually can produce. So um, the bigger fatter ewes will tend to have the worse lambs. and. Uh, of course, the um, best condition ewes tend to have the best condition lambs. Uh, you you do want a uh, ewe going into um, lambing to have uh, good condition on her because she is going to milk it away like uh, this mom right here. So she has to have a re reserve so that she doesn't actually kill herself by milking so hard. Who's this? Why are you why are you scratching me? Why? And there's Hunchy again. Hunchy's always here. Cause she likes a lot of attention. Don't you, Hunchy? And on the topic of body uh, condition fat fat ewes and skinny ewes also uh, tend to throw less eggs, so they'll have less multiples. The skinny because uh, uh, nature doesn't think she's capable of raising lambs because she doesn't have any, any reserves herself. And the fat ones, just because um, of, I believe it's from the fat deposits that they have inside them, um, they just won't produce um, enough eggs which is kind of neat how nature works. So um, ideally, the uh, ewes in the best condition, not too fat, not too thin, they'll breed the fastest, and they will tend to have the most lambs and the healthiest lambs, of course. Um, ewes who have a hard time breeding tend to be the overweight ewes, not so much the skinny ewes unless they're really, really poor, but uh, the fat ewes uh, tend to have that problem. So what a lot of farmers do, um, if they have the space and the facilities for it, they will pregnancy scan their ewes um, and sort them into groups according to how many lambs they're carrying so that they can be fed accordingly. Um, singles, twins, and triplets, uh, because 
uh, mom carrying triplets is gonna need a bit more nutrition than say one carrying a single. Uh, we can't do that, so we we try to have our sheep in good condition when they go into lambing with the assumption that uh, because of the breeds we have, our average is going to be around 2.0, which it is, so um, it works kind of well for us, but people who have lots of multiples and stuff like that uh, might... Uh, tend to do things a little more differently and sort their ewes so that they can be fed accordingly. Awesome. <laughs> this is the ewe that had the triplets. He's trying to show you she has two teeth, but we saw this already. Remember when I she was chewing her cud in the barn? <laughs> she said it looked like she only had two teeth. She does only have two teeth. So everybody's doing well. Peanut's in a different uh, area right now because she's going to get let out with her mom in the group pen as soon as Ernie trims her feet. So we'll see how that works out. And everything in the jugs is good except for the triplet lamb, the cute one. They're all laying under there now. They're asleep. But I got one that takes a bottle really well. The little female took her first uh, sips on a bottle at lunchtime, so that was an improvement. The only one who didn't take a bottle still is the cute one. So um, I didn't feed him as much in the hopes that he will become hungry enough that he will take a bottle by this evening. If not, he's going to get tubed again for the night. But uh, he's a definite slow lear learner. But uh, sisters are doing much better. Hey, Peanut. Peanut, you have to give her only so much in a bottle. If you let her drink what she wants, she'll actually drink until she bloats herself. So, um, on that note, we're going to call it a day. Um, it's still bright out, which is the nice thing about time change uh, happening now. Um, the dark was getting a little bit depressing. There you go, buddy. You want your food? So, now I think it might make us feel a little more lively with uh, daylight savings time in effect. So we're going to call it a day and hope you'll join us again next time for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.